What's up guys, welcome back to Fishing Hex, appreciate you stopping in. In today's video, as promised, I'm gonna be setting up micro bubbles slash nano bubbles in the 125 gallon root tank. I'm gonna go through the build process, then the programming process within the Apex, and then finally, at the end of the video, I'll get into the benefits of implementing this on your system. So, let's go to get into it. So the first thing I did is I took the protective screen off the JVO DCS 12,000 return pump. I opened it up and I put in a wooden air stone. I went ahead and added some zip ties just in case it moved around, but it's pretty snug in the first place. Now what this is going to do is allow the micro bubbles to get sucked in directly into the return pump and then of course adding them into the main display that way. Once this process was complete, I went ahead and I put the screen back on the pump and I added the airline hose. When it comes to the air pump, I decided to use the one that's connected to the quarantine system, uh, mainly because it is pretty overkill. It is a four port one from Peco. It's actually the biggest one they make. And uh, what I did is I just replaced it with a smaller pump and it worked out just fine. Next thing I did is I took the four ports on that pump and I connected them down to a single one, which then, you know, eventually connected to the air stone. Uh, right now it moves a ton of air. I don't know if there's such thing as overkill when it comes to pumping too much air uh, via this uh, air stone, but uh, it works out great so far and I didn't have to purchase another pump, which is always a good thing. Once everything was assembled, I went ahead and did a quick test just to make sure everything was working. After that, it was time to move into the programming. All right, now that everything is connected, let's go into the Apex and do some programming and get this all set up. Uh, one thing I want to know is my particular situation. I'm going to break down pretty much what I'm doing right now before we get into it, just so it makes some sense. All right. Now, when I was testing this out, I noticed that the left output wasn't producing micro bubbles. It just, I think the water has to travel too far. The bubbles combine and they're just uh, bigger when they come out. So they're not really micro bubbles slash nano bubbles at that point. Now, when it comes to the right output, there's no issue. It's micro bubbles slash nano bubbles without any issues. Now, one thing I did notice is during the test that I wasn't getting a good spread on these bubbles. So that means that I need to manipulate my power heads in a way that the bubbles will spread through the tank and, uh, you know, work efficiently. Now, what that means is I have to go through and I have to program the power heads in a way that they will spread the flow to make it work. Now, one thing I'm going to do here, guys, is we're going to go through and I'm going to set up a wave profile. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a virtual outlet. And then we're going to program the power heads to make everything work. So that's pretty much what we're going to do in this video. If you guys don't already know this, my JBO PPH on the back wall and my JBO uh, WP40s on the right and left side of the tank are all connected to the Apex. There's a video on my playlist here uh, showing how you can do that just in case you're interested. But let's go ahead and get into the program here. So we're going to get into my Apex. The first thing we want to do is we want to go into the EB8 and we want to uh, program it to kick on and turn on the air pump. So that's the first thing we want to do. So I already went ahead and I did all the programming, guys. We're just going to go through it and show you how I did it. Now here on the EB8, we have uh, the uh, uh, power bar here. Went ahead and I named it air pump and then uh, did simple programming. I'm only going to have it on for an hour just for the purpose of this. Uh, basically, I just did simple programming from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. This outlet will be on. That's simple. So now that that's done, Let's go into the profile, which is a wave profile. Now, uh, what I wanted to do is I want this specific wave profile to control the power heads in a way that they will spread the flow. So let's go ahead and get into that profile. Now, these are the different profiles I use currently on the system, not only for my LED lights, but for the power heads already. Now, what I did is I went ahead and I added a bubble surge wave profile. Now, I went ahead and turned it on, so it's gonna be on for approximately five minutes, and then it will turn off for 30 seconds, all right, and then it's going to be um, completely off for those 30 seconds, and then when it is on, it will be on for 100%. So any any pump that I designate to run this profile will have that, will be on for approximately five minutes, off for 30 seconds at 100%. All right, noted. Let's go ahead and move on to the virtual outlet. Now, you need to use virtual outlets within the programming so they will um, trigger that specific surge mode, and you guys will see here in a second what I mean by that. Now, what I did here is, uh, we have our regular outlets here, and then of course you see virtual. Um, there's when I program programmed the pumps originally in that video. There's a whole setup on how to do uh, virtual outlets. All right. Now let's go ahead and go down here to the virtual outlet that I designated for uh, this actual pump, which is right here. It's called bubble timer, which is the whole you know using bubbles if it makes sense. Now what I did is I just named it bubble timer, and I did very very simple programming here. If the time is 7 p.m., it will be on until 8 p.m. Basically, any other time besides that, it's off. So basically, that virtual outlet will turn on during that time, the exact same time that the air pump kicks on. Now that that is said and done, let's go ahead and move into the actual pumps that I decided to use for this timer. Now, as I mentioned, the right side is the only side that the micro bubbles are coming out. So 
what I did is I took the outlet of the uh, of the return pump and I put it facing the WP or sorry the PPA pump on the back wall. So basically the bubbles will hit that pump and then be pushed forward. So that's the first thing we want to focus on is I want to be able to push the bubbles forward into the tank. So that means we need to program the uh, PP8 pump. All right, so this is the programming that I currently use on this pump. Ignore all this stuff because that's part of the other programming. What you need to focus on is this right here, which is if outlet bubble timer, that virtual outlet that we made is on, then it will activate the profile bubble surge. So if that, pump, that um, outlet is on, the bubble surge profile will be working. So that is on the PP8. So what that's gonna do is it's going to force at 100% power the micro bubbles forward into the tank. The next thing I need to do is push the bubbles across the tank. So that means we need to activate the WP40, which is on the right side of the tank. Same setup here with the profiles. And then what we need to focus on here is this programming, which is the exact same. If outlet bubble timers on, then bubble surge profile will be activated at 100%. So that basically the bubbles will be pushed forward with the PV8 and then the WP40 will push them to the left across the tank. Now, because I want them to spread across the tank efficiently, I wanna make sure that the uh, left WP40 and the left PP8 are not turned on during this time because I don't want bubbles getting pushed back the other way. That would just mess up the whole process of spreading them around the tank. So what we need to do is we need to go into the uh, WP40 left and the PP8 left and we need to do a different type of program. Now, ignore all this. We're gonna look at this here, which is uh, if outlet bubble timer is on, then off. So basically during that time, once that profile is on, or that, that, that outlet is on, basically the uh, PP8 left and the WP40 left will not be on at all, just leaving the two pumps on the right side to spread the bubbles around. Now, hopefully that makes sense, guys. Um, if you have any questions, like I said, put it in the comment section below and let me know. All right, guys, now that everything is hooked up and programmed, let's go ahead and look at it on the tank. Now, I didn't bother messing with the lights or anything like that, so it's going to be a little washed out, a little bright, but that's okay. We're just looking at the micro bubbles and how they spread around the tank. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to let it run at regular speed for a second here, and then we're going to go ahead and fast forward up and you'll see how it works within the tank. Okay, now that the tank is running, I'm going to briefly get into some of the benefits of using these bubbles within your retank. I will link in the description below an article where you can completely read up on it and get all the information that you need. Uh, and then you can make a better decision of what, you know, if you decide to use this in your reef tank or not. Now, the first thing that I've seen and noticed is that it allows the corals to release excess slime and waste, uh, partic particularly on Acropora, it attached to it and, and then it pretty much picks up and, and brings that slime coat and detritus to the surface of the water, which you've seen in the previous video, and then allows that to be picked up by the filter socks or skimmed off. The next thing is it allows coral membranes to breathe and allows for better osmosis and ion exchange with the water column. Uh, the next thing here, which is pretty cool, is it, it degasses excess CO2, which in turn, if you guys see my pH video, it allows when you remove CO2 from your reef tank, it allows your pH to be elevated, which is always a good thing. The next thing here is it oxygenates the water. I mean, how could it not, right? It's bringing in a ton of air, uh, which is good because if you have more oxygen in the water, it's good for the fish, it's good for the coral. And, and then again, more oxygen is better pH, all right? The next thing I'm going to talk about here is it, it binds itself to proteins and harmful compounds uh, within the water column and then brings that stuff all to the surface where it can be skimmed out. So, uh, you know, diatoms, uh, you know, different types of algae, detritus and all that kind of stuff. It pretty much binds to it, brings it up to the surface and then allows that stuff to get picked up. Uh, hence the reason why my filter socks need to be changed literally every day now. Um, other, you know, before it was like every three days, now it's every day, which is definitely not a bad thing. Uh, some people say you don't need to use um, filter socks with this because if you have a really good refugium, pretty much everything gets picked up with a refugium um, or processed out through the skimmer. I have noticed that my skimmer is definitely working a lot more. I have to empty the cup out every other day and it's a dark, dark skimming. So, I mean, there's nothing wrong with uh, skimming more um, and, you know, having a cleaner tank is always a good thing. Now let's go ahead and look at one of the reasons why people don't like using these bubbles within the reef tank. Uh, you will notice that you will get air trapped up underneath stuff like Monty caps within the bird's nest and stuff like that, which could be bad if you uh, keep that air there too long. So basically what I've done to remedy this is I have those surge modes, as you guys know, that just blast the tank at full power uh, several times throughout the day. So I definitely have at least two surge modes after I use these nano bubbles and basically all those bubbles that got trapped underneath those Monty caps are all being forced out and released into the water column. So I don't have to worry about getting those air bubbles trapped and then eventually, you know, killing the coral because of it. 
one thing I want to mention before I let you guys go is there's a lot of debate out there on the forums uh, regarding, you know, does this work? Does it not work? Is it really worth it in the end? And frankly, uh, when it comes to this hobby, if you find that something, uh, you know, works for you, keep doing it. And in my personal experience, uh, regardless of what other people have said, it has worked in my reef tank. I've noticed an increase in, you know, clean the filter socks, clean the skimmer, which indicates that I'm picking up more detritus and waste within the water column. I'm also seeing that the uh, mucus membrane is being released from these acropora and I'm getting better polyp extension within my acros. Now that's all important to me. Now, uh, could I go on without it? Of course I could, but I'm in this hobby to try new things and to see what works best for me. Now, I recommend that you do your own research, do your own trial and error and see what works best for you and then come to your own decision. All right, guys, either way, I appreciate you watching the video. If you have any questions, put it in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time, guys. Peace.